Hey guys, my name is Javier Perez, and I'm currently a senior material artist at PlayStation's Visual Arts Service Group. I've been in the industry for about nine years now. In this lesson, we'll be going over how to create a vertex blending material inside the Unreal Engine. We will be taking our textures from our last video and setting up a shader that we can utilize to paint moss wherever we want on our cliffside. Here I have a small example scene of what we'll be able to achieve at the very end of the video. I'm not necessarily going to show you guys how to set up the lighting and the rendering, but more so just the shader so we can get this effect. So you can see me here, I'm just painting out the moss and then with the switch of our paint colors, we can paint that back in. So pretty straightforward, simple plane and heavily tessellated and we'll be able to paint this guy in no time. So let's get started. Now we're going to jump back into Substance Designer really quick and show you guys just the final exports that I came out with. So this is a final graph from our last video. Uh, I went ahead and exported um, these uh, final outputs. You can kind of see them here. But one other thing I did was I actually created a duplicate of this uh, full cliff material, duplicated it, and then deleted anything having to do with the moss. So I have this guy right here. I'm just going to go to View Outputs in 3D and there you go so if we actually zoom in on the graph it's pretty much the exact same graph except i went ahead and deleted anything that was pertaining to having moss or pine needles or any of that extra stuff i left the lichen in there because i thought it was a cool little detail but besides that the graphs are essentially the same so if you guys want to go ahead and follow along all you guys have to do is just find the connection points delete the stuff and just re-plug everything in so just with the cliff on its own, it's a sh lot shorter graph. And I went ahead and exported these as well. So I'm just going to bring up uh, my Windows Explorer here. And we have the combined texture sheets of with the moss and the um, cliff. And then we have just the cliff on its own. I also went ahead and did another graph with just the moss on its own in case we needed that. Uh, so feel free to do that as well. Next up, let's go back into Unreal and let's actually start importing these guys. Inside the textures folder, let's actually create some separate folders. Uh, let's do combined. That way, that'll be the one with both the moss and the cliff. And I'm just going to do a cliff only folder here. So let's go to combine. And what I'm going to do is we could do two separate things. We can either open up the Windows Explorer and just drag these guys in here. Or we could right click and do an import. I'm just going to do our Windows Explorer. I'm going to hit combine, select all these guys and drag them in. Cool. The only thing um, I'm going to leave these guys as is. The only thing that I like to do with this guy is um, because we're working in OpenGL inside of Substance, Unreal, likes, uh, Unreal works in DirectX. So I'm just going to go and flip the Y channel. So our normal map displays correctly so all I did was go in the details pane and just search for flip and then I just flipped green channel hit save on this guy close this out we are gonna go back into our let's see we're gonna go back into our textures go back into cliff and same thing I'm just bringing in my window here drag these guys in close this out and let's actually go ahead same thing with this guy Gonna resize a little better so it fits our window cool and again just go in here look for flip flip the green channel save that out cool so now our textures are ready to go uh, one other thing for the mesh uh, I'm just gonna bring that guy in from my finished um, finished scene it's a pretty simple plane I'm just gonna copy it over here so I'm just gonna do a let's see do a control C go into our meshes do a control V here we go. I'm just going to open it up so you guys can get a better idea of what this mesh is. So nothing crazy. It's just a simple mesh stood up on its side pretty much. Um, you guys can lay it flat, but for presentation purposes, I decided to rotate it inside a Maya. And the wireframe, um, it's pretty heavily tessellated as is. That's because I went ahead and added some quads in Maya. Um, I, I find that when I pre-quad it inside of my 3D package, it works better off uh, when I tessellate it inside of Unreal. So I'm just going to save that. And one other thing to know is SM stands for static mesh. So again, if you guys want to follow um, the criteria for Unreal's naming conventions, that's what SM stands for. So great. So now we have our meshes, our cliff, 
and our combined textures. So let's actually go ahead and drag out our mesh super quickly. So I'm gonna rot this, rotate this guy, turn on angle snapping so it stays on 90. Cool. It's telling me lighting needs to be rebuilt. So for the purposes, again, for this demo, I am gonna make everything dynamic. So I'm just gonna move this to movable. So now we don't have to worry about that. Great, so now we have our plane in our scene. The next thing we're ready to do is uh, start on our material. So let's go ahead and just right click in our empty space and hit new material. And we're just gonna call this M for material underscore. And we're just gonna do blend and just name it 01. Cool. Gonna open up this guy. So one of the first things that I'm going to do is actually bring in all those texture samples. So let's go ahead and do that really quickly. So I'm just gonna go in, just gonna move this to the side really quick and bring this over here. Gonna drop in our cliff first. And what I personally like to do, and this is just, um, you know, whatever you guys would like to do. And let me actually resize this window really quickly. so. It better fits the screen cool so one of the things I like to do for cleanliness is I like to arrange the textures in the same manner that they are arranged on our material outputs so you'll notice base color on top metallic roughness etc etc so I just like going ahead and just putting those in that order so I'm just gonna move these guys out of the way And here I'm just gonna go and um, put them in that order here. So normal, ambient occlusion. And we don't have the um, height information turned on just yet on the shader. So we'll, plug the, we'll turn that on just in a second. This goes here. Cool, and this one's roughness actually. Roughness, metallic roughness, here we go. Cool, so we have the first set in here. Next up, let's bring our other set in here. So I'm just gonna go again to combined, bring these guys in here, move this back over. And again, just putting these in the correct order as I find them needed. Uh, let's see, we're actually not gonna deal with the fuzz in this demo, so go ahead and delete that. But again, let's see, metallic, roughness, normal, this guy and height at the bottom here. Cool, I'm just gonna move these guys and I'm just gonna comment on these. So if you select all these or select whichever ones you want, you can hit the C key and that'll give us a comment. So I'm just gonna name this Moss. And I'm just gonna name this Cliff. Cool, so moving these away. Uh, one of the things that I'd like to do with the shader itself is I actually want to turn on um, tessellation. So all you have to do is just click on this guy and then search for it in here. So if we, if we scroll down enough to the area that says tessellation, I'm just gonna change that to flat tessellation we're going to turn off adaptive and i'm going to set the max tessellation to something kind of high so something like 500. so one of the first things i like to set up with our any sort of material is set up just tiling so we have the ability to tile this guy so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to bring in a constant one vector so just a, a single number i'm going to bring in a texture coordinate here so if you just right click hit tex and texture coordinate, cool. And then we're gonna bring in a, a multiply just by holding M and clicking. We're just gonna multiply these two together. And I'm just gonna set this to one because if we leave it at zero and start plugging in the UVs, it's gonna stretch like it's thinking that there absolutely is no UVs. So with a value of one, it's staying to a tiling of just one single value. So I'm just gonna go ahead and actually plug this guy into each one of these guys, so.
cool. And this is going to actually control the amount of tiling that we have on our material. Put this guy in there. And finally, this guy. Cool. Now, if you kind of want to see a small little demo of how this is working, what we can do is right click on any of our textures and hit uh, start previewing node. So you can kind of see just our color map there in the 3D preview. And what we can do here is we can actually start messing with this valley. So if I hit a two or maybe something more extreme like a 10, you can kind of see that it's start tiling and it's, it's just tiled a way more at a valley of 10. But let's actually just set this back to one. Again, I'm just gonna comment this out and just say tiling amount. And I'm actually going to um, convert this to a um, parameter. That way, when we create material instances, this is going to be controllable and we don't have to actually go back into our main uh, shader. So I'm just going to name this tiling. Next, let's actually go ahead and start blending these different textures together. So to do that, we're actually going to utilize the height uh, lerp node. So. Um, what this wants you to do is it basically wants you to take uh, texture A, texture B, uh, transition phase, height, and contrast. Transition phase, because we're using vertex color, we're going to bring in a vertex color node. Uh, height texture, that's just the height texture that we created in substance. And for contrast, we can plug in a just a constant one vector, and that's going to control how much contrast is happening between the blend. So let's go ahead and start plugging these guys in. This might start getting a little messy, so bear in mind, but if we just follow along, we're basically gonna do the same thing, this node multiplied like six times. So uh, for the transition phase, again, I said I was gonna use a vertex color, so let's actually look for that vertex color there. Cool. And uh, we wanna pay on the red channel, so I'm just gonna pick the red channel here. Transition phase, cool. Let's see. Move these out of the way really quick. For our height texture, I'm going to actually duplicate our height texture that has the moss on it. So I'm just going to duplicate this guy. Move it here. And then while I'm here, I'm just going to plug in or create my constant one vector. And this is going to control the um, the contrast of this guy. So let's actually go ahead and right click, convert to parameter, contrast. Oh, let's see, let's see, here we go. Uh, let's name it high contrast actually. Cool, I'm just gonna hit C on this guy and let's just name this height settings, or sorry, blend settings. Cool. So let's actually plug in this height into our height texture and contrast. Plug this into here. Cool. So I'm actually going to set this to a value of zero because we don't want any contrast uh, from the start. We can actually turn that on later on. Great. So again, for the sake of cleanliness, I'm just going to comment this guy out and we're going to say color height blend cool so let's go ahead and start the process of just duplicating these guys so I'm just gonna do one how many is this let's see three six okay cool two three four five six okay sitting on top of each other here Move these guys and great one two three Four, five, six. Did I create an extra one? Yeah, I think I actually did. Okay. Cool. So let's actually bring in our metallics. So I'm, I'm kind of showing you guys. I know we have a metallic of just black, um, and our map mass or maps are just black for the metallic we could essentially just plug in a constant one uh, vector and just set it to zero so it reads as black. But I want to just have this in case you guys end up making a material that does have some sort of metallic in there. It doesn't have to be a cliff, but for the purpose of the demo, this can be utilized um, for anything moving forward. 
like so any other kind of material that you guys want to blend together so say you're blending some dirt onto a metal grating you might have some metallic in there so it's just for the purposes of um, make it easier for you guys to kind of see a metallic map being utilized here okay and let's see we got that so again transition phase it's gonna be that this guy in here and there so I'm actually gonna start um, I'm actually just gonna start plugging these guys in like quicker this way I feel like get some more groundwork here by just plugging all these guys in okay and then we're gonna plug in these eyes and our height height cool and same thing with our contrast make sure it's being plugged into each one of these guys and great okay so now all that's left is just combining these guys so roughness up here boom and our normal plug that in there plug that in there normal normal okay next up is our ambient occlusion here oh actually i might have messed up this one actually goes at the bottom here so actually let me actually see if i messed up any sort of connectors here so if you just hover over one of these guys kind of see where this connector is going getting a little bit lost here so cool i was right okay i just want to make sure that they're going in their corresponding values so all these bottom ones are going to b all these tops ones top ones are going to a so let's actually take this guy to b cool next up let's do we have the normal in a so i'm gonna bring this guy into a and then Oh, actually, three, six, three, six. No, I'm right. Okay. Ah, there we go. Sorry about that. Cool. So let's go ahead and actually name these. So again, hit C. This is going to be our metallic, metallic eye blend. It's going to be our roughness. And this guy is going to be our normal high blend. Our, let's see, our ambient AO. And lastly, our height. Height, height blend, I guess, because we're bringing in our. Cool. So let's actually just move these kind of close to the middle, see what's going on here. Great. Now, before we actually plug this, these things into our final output, there is actually the setup of getting this height map to actually tessellate our material. So let's go ahead and set that up real quick. So to get the tessellation to work, um, I'm remembering that we do actually have to have another blend here because of the way that we're going to set up our uh, height texture here. So to get it to actually start tessellating our, um, our kind of our object or our texture that this material will be applied on is we're just going to bring in a multiply here. So hold M, click, multiply this guy and bring in a constant one vector. And let's actually go ahead and parameterize this guy, convert to parameter. And what we're gonna name this, we're gonna name this guy Cliff Tessellation Tess, let's see, Tessellation Strength. Cool, and this is gonna control the amount that it's going to be pushed from the object. So the higher the tessellation, the more intense, like 
the displacement is going to be on our mesh. So from there, we're actually going to bring another multiply. And then we're going to do a vertex normal WS world scale. Bring another multiply. And then we're going to bring in a object radius node. Let's see, object radius node. Cool. So these guys basically take the account, the shape of the object, and in turn kind of tells it how much uh, geometry to use on your tessellation. So let's actually, now that we have this guy all set up, we can just plug it into our B now. So one thing, um, let's actually move this to the side here. I'm going to hit C. And I'm just going to name this Cliff tessellation cool so let's actually go ahead and copy this guy and to apply it because we just need the same nodes to be applied to the material that has the moss on this guy so I'm just gonna move this out of the way move this guy out of the way and plug this guy over here and I'm gonna plug this guy in for this guy though I'm actually gonna change the name so it doesn't get us confused to moss tessellation strength cool and a good value to set these guys to is just one to start out with. That way we can easily push it as we feel needed uh, once we create our material instance. So I'm going to take this guy and plug in the B. Okay. Now at the, or sorry, now earlier I said um, we needed to create another high blend. And that's because we're going to blend the, uh, two amounts that tell it how much to tessellate each one of these guys. So let's actually bring in a vector here and we're gonna set this to something around three. And what this is gonna control is the amount of tessellation that our object is going to get. So higher amounts is more geo is gonna be added. Less amounts gonna get more jaggedy, less kind of refined on the edges and stuff like that. So I'm going to plug Actually, let's actually convert this to a parameter. I'm going to take this name strength. I'm just going to copy it on here and I'm just going to name it multiply. Cool. And again here doing one of these and let's actually start plugging these guys into this. So transition phase our height map and our contrast here. Great. And now we're taking our cliff tessellation and we're going to plug this guy into our B. Going to copy this guy, just move it closer to over here. And we're going to name this uh, Moss. So just rename this really quickly. Moss, leave it at the three is fine. Cool. And you can actually see here we have the tessellation multiplier. So we're just going to go ahead and name that. So tessellation multiplier. And I, f I figured out that it's probably best to name it uh, according to what the actual material uh, outputs or inputs are. So let's actually name this world displacement high blend world displacement high blend cool so now all that all that's left for us to do really is just plug in these final results into their corresponding inputs on our shader so we're going to do our color going to do our metallic and actually let's right click and on this guy because we forgot to turn off the stop previewing node here Cool, so we'll do our roughness. Oh, we'll do our normal. We'll do our ambient occlusion. We'll do our world displacement height blend. And then, oh, we're already getting some results here. We're starting to get some, don't mind the flickering. That's just a weird thing when you start adding tessellation on this guy, the closer you get to the camera. Sometimes you get some weird flickering, but Keep that in mind. And then lastly, the tessellation multiplier here. Great. So 
Let's go ahead and save this. One thing uh, to note before we actually leave this window is let's go ahead and look at our um, our parameter details or defaults, sorry. So if we click on this guy, you can kind of see everything we parameterized throughout the graph, we can see it here. So we have our high contrast, moss tessellation. Uh, oh, looks like we actually, oh no, we have it right. Moss tessellation multiplier, moss tessellation strength, and then our tiling. Let's actually go ahead and rename this guy to UV tiling so we know exactly what we're talking about here. Cool, so now it's pretty much ready to go. Awesome. So now let's go ahead and just do a quick save and let's try to apply this guy on our plane. So let's minimize this window and let's go ahead and go into our materials. So we have our material blend here. I'm just going to scale this up a little bit quicker. Now we don't want to apply this master, uh, this master shader onto our, um, onto our plane. Instead, we're going to do a create a material instance. That way all the different um, parameters or sorry, all the different values that we parameterized, we can actually access them a lot quicker. So I'm going to change this to MI for material instance and just take off the instance there. Cool. So you see our material here and you can kind of see uh, all these are turned on here. So let's go ahead and minimize this really quickly to the side and this is the one we're actually going to apply so we're getting some pretty intense tessellation right now what we can do is let's go ahead and turn down the strength of it so right now it's only um, because our cliff texture is at the bottom um, that's what's being colored we have no vertex painting information currently so that's why it's only showing the bottom texture so let's actually turn on these guys and let's actually tone this down quite a bit like something like there that's looking pretty cool maybe less I'm gonna hit the G key so we could go to game mode and it gets rid of all the other stuff cool I'm going to just rotate this guy just slightly and I just want to get some cool shadows on this guy so I'm going to move this out of the way turn off this Cool. We can go ahead and change the settings. There's some shadow settings that we could turn on in directional light, but for the purpose of this demo, I'm not gonna focus too much on the lighting or rendering of this guy. All right, so we have this guy, and here I'm just gonna show you guys the what the multiplier does. So, for example, let's say we just bump this guy even more. So we get some we get some pretty okay kind of. Um, shape like language here you know you can kind of see our our stuff isn't too jaggedy but let's actually take this down to zero you can kind of see the polys are starting to get um uh, a little bit kind of not as uniform and not as clean as soon as we start bumping up the multiplier we start getting like less jaggedy and our displays like we can start seeing some stuff going on here so just leave it at like i don't know i'm just gonna do a 10. That's pretty good. So let's go ahead and actually start painting our other um, our other texture in here. So to do that, we're just gonna click on our object. We're gonna click on modes up here. This is new, I'm using, um, let's see, I actually don't know what version, I believe. I'm actually using 4.25 of the Unreal Editor. So in case you're not seeing the same um, toolbar and stuff like that, make sure to update. So I'm just going to hit mode. We're going to do mesh paint. And here, we're still in select mode here. So uh, we want to switch to paint. Now, the two biggest things that you guys should worry about are the size and these two colors, and also the uh, channel, sorry, uh, three things. So um, because in our master shader, if you remember, we were utilizing this red channel here, we're actually just going to leave that one on and turn off everything else. Um, so we have that pretty much set up. I believe um, white is going to erase and black is going to paint. So um, instead of actually going up and down on size here, what you can do is hit the bracket key on your keyboard and that should, yeah. I should bring it up or down. 
So let's do a quick stroke here and see what happens. Okay, what that's actually doing is because we it's working as intended, but because um, you can see that the moss is getting painted, but because we lowered the intensity and we changed a few settings of the tessellation of the um, of the cliff, we want the valleys to be similar to um, what's already there. So if we go back into our shader here. So let's go back into our blend. So our cliff tessellation, or sorry, our cliff strength is 1.8 on just the cliff itself. But you'll notice that on our, let's see, on our moss texture, it's still at one. So if we just control C this valley and control V, there we go. Now we can start seeing it. So now if we start painting, kind of starts seeing this effect here. Cool. So if we hit X, we can actually start erasing some stuff. And again, just putting it wherever you guys want. So that's one way to do it. Um, we can actually go ahead and turn on a UV tiling so you can kind of see what's going on here. If we wanted to do that. Now, I talked to you guys earlier about bringing in our moss just on its own. So let's go ahead and do that really quickly. So let's go back into our textures here. Let's go ahead and we're actually gonna create a new folder here and we're just gonna name this guy moss only. Cool. And here, let's actually bring up our old explore window um, if I still have it. I'm just gonna bring in, open up a new window here on the side. It's off screen, so uh, let's see. I'm trying to find my TGAs here. Great, so I have these guys. So I'm just gonna import these guys. And there we go. I was getting a really weird error when I was actually bringing in uh, the normal map for the moss itself. It, um, it actually set the um, the compression settings to just default instead of normal map. So I went actually in and changed that to normal map. To keep in mind, just in case, uh, I'm assuming it's because of the finer details, it's giving you some weird normal map colors, which uh, Unreal might not like. But again, we're just gonna go ahead and flip this. Hit save. Great. And let's actually move this off screen let's actually close this window and we're going to go back into our master shader and do just one more thing so go into our blend so to quickly create a different variation where say we just want to instead of using um this texture we want to plug in something and we still want to use our material instance but plug in anything we want all we have to really do is just uh, convert these guys to parameters so we actually go into here and i'm just going to name this moss albedo and continue on the same trend uh, down this line. So convert to parameter. You can do this. Um, you could probably have done this. Um, oh, sorry. Um, while we are actually bringing these guys in, but you know, whenever you guys want. Sometimes I add parameters after the fact. Sometimes I add parameters while I'm actually creating the material. It's just up to you guys um, how you guys are going to use these. Um, it's funny because sometimes, um, sometimes as I'm creating like all these different outputs, when I'm creating shaders instead of Unreal, I realize I'm exposing so much, and then my parameter list inside of um, inside of my material instance is like super complicated. So try to only parameterize what you think you'll need and then just go back and, you know, make the changes as needed. So cool, we got all these parameterized, press save. Gonna move this window to the side. Let's actually bring this guy down and let's go back into our select mode. So we don't wanna be working with vertex color stuff right now. Uh, we're gonna go and back to our materials. We're going to duplicate this instance. So duplicate, it's just gonna name it O2. Gonna bring this window back in here. Great. 
And then here we can actually start plugging in our maps. I believe we're missing one here. Ah, uh, yes, it looks like we didn't parameterize the normal map. Oh, that's actually my bad. I renamed this wrong here. So let's go back. Hit normal. Okay, and let's go ahead and find where this is. Oh, here we go. So everything should look good now. So we got, yeah, okay. I accidentally named two things roughness, which canceled out one of the normals, unfortunately. So save that. Let's go back into here. We should be seeing everything now, so. We still have to rename this guy. So this is Moss Roughness, Normal Roughness. This is Moss Normal. Cool. Let's see if we go back into here. Moss Normal, Moss Metal. Okay, cool. Now we're getting everything. So let's go back into our newly created instance that we just did. Again, everything's just tabs. So uh, quickly switch between guys um, so let's actually turn these guys on boom 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 and we're actually gonna start plugging in our textures of our just our moss only so move these to the side really quick and let's actually bring in this our ambient our height italic normal and Let's do roughness. Okay, hit save. And I'm actually going to duplicate this. So uh, just hit control C, control V. Oh, it looks like our grid snapping is insane. So move this over to the side. And let's actually drop this guy in. Cool, so we're already getting some interesting effect here because uh, we already have, it's taking, because we duplicated this material, it's doing the same painting. So keep that in mind. Um, also the flickering, um, take note, uh, tessellation does some weird things. If you're getting some weird flickering, all you have to do is just select your um, meshes and under the bounds, or sorry, go in the details pane, look for bounds and just scale this up to like two or something like that. Cool, we can do the same one over here too. Keep in mind when you mess with this value, you'll have to adjust your um, tessellation strength as well. So um, I wanted to start with a clean slate to show you guys what's going on, but because we copied the same vertex color, the same mesh, it's got the same things here. So let's actually go back into the mesh paint, kind of paint, and we can actually start getting rid of some stuff here. So the moss and the, um, and the cliff, when you're painting it like separately, so these are both separate materials now, they're not, you're not necessarily painting the same material over one with just some added um, information. This, this, uh, this little um, example here is actually using two different height maps. So, you know, you can kind of see what's going on here. We're getting some extreme valleys here. Uh, what you could do to alleviate this kind of stretching done with the tessellation, that's where that, um, the the contrast comes in so if we do turn this guy on i'm just going to move this over here we that high contrast we can actually start messing with the blend and we can sort of alleviate that a little bit so now we're starting to get some of the moss creeping in on the actual cliff and it just kind of smoothens out the the harsh vertex painting because these materials have um two completely different uh height maps so that about covers it with vertex blending inside of Unreal. I hope you guys learned something. Uh, we're gonna be continuing this video series with um, creating some more materials and creating a small little scene in the end. Uh, I hope you guys learned something and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.